A Thousand Friends of Florida took a look at what Northeast Florida looked like in 2005. And then if we continue to grow the way we have been growing, what it would look like in 2060. This was really the impetus for us starting to take a look at a sustainable region because, as you can see, we essentially paved the parking lot. Um, we used similar assumptions as A Thousand Friends of Florida, and we decided we can grow, we can develop in a different way, and we can develop a region that we want to see instead of letting the trend that A Thousand Florida um, projected just happen to us. So we took a look at four different patterns of growth. We started with Reality Check First Coast. That's where we got our patterns. We then did preference polling for everyone in the region, as many folks as we could get to participate. And we chose patterns that would work for Northeast Florida. The thing about all of them is that each of them uses only about a quarter of the land that would be otherwise used if we grow the way we have been growing. The goals of the committee are basically to um, begin with education. The most important thing is to have this discussion as a region on how we want to grow up so that our kids have the same incredible quality of life that we have now. We want to capitalize on the leadership that this region has fostered in taking a look of it at its future to make sure that we can grow, we can choose our future. We want to update the strategic regional policy plan, which is the state mandated plan that every region must have, and every local government needs to be um, consistent in it, consistent with it as they do their um, comprehensive plans. That's a major implementation tool. We want to make sure that the health of our residents is included in all of the discussions. We were somewhat unusual in that we looked at health from the very beginning as related to growth management. We want to make sure that we consider affordable housing, that we look at the jobs and housing balance so that our homes and our jobs are close to each other. Um, and we want to make sure that we take full advantage of the assets of our region and make sure they're still there for our kids. There's a lot of things that a sustainable community can mean for our region. The first thing that it means is the quality of life aspects. We now have the ability to live an agricultural, a suburban, a rural, or an urban lifestyle all within one region. We need to pay attention to make sure that our kids and our grandkids have that, those same choices. The fact that agriculture is still viable in our region is extraordinary and is wonderful because it gives us options that other regions simply don't have. Um, about half of our region is undeveloped, so we have the ability to take advantage of the large amounts of land that aren't yet developed um, to keep them in their current use or maximize their utility. They have a great deal to do with our carbon footprint, um, and they have a great deal to do with, as I said, the quality of life. People in Northeast Florida recognize that open space is very important, um, and that's one of the things that when, they, when you look at how satisfied they are with life in the region that they first look at. Um, the other thing that we can do is we Look, we asked each of our counties what, what they wanted to see in the future. They all said they wanted more jobs. Now, that makes sense, especially in today's environment, but it also makes sense from a sustainability perspective. Because if you put jobs where the houses are, you reduce the amount of vehicle miles that are traveled. That has thousands of implications, most of them to do with resources. Um, you end up not using as much land if your homes are more compact and close to jobs. You end up providing a great deal more options for all of our citizens. Ours is one of the regions where if you don't have enough money to own a car, it is very difficult to work because the principal way that people get to work is to drive. If we move housing closer to jobs and if we provide some transit in appropriate locations, that then means that everybody can participate in wealth building and that's important to everyone. There are several examples that we can certainly learn from. Um, one is the, uh, the triangle um, in, in North um, Carolina. 
Um, they were one of the regions that started in, literally in 1959, they started thinking like a region. And they started saying, we want to be recognized as a place that's friendly for business. So they did their best to eliminate um, impediments to businesses moving to their region, and they started thinking like an organized region. As they worked on it, they included sustainability in their plans, and now they're known not just for, the, for their business friendliness, but also for their quality of life. And every year, they're recognized as being one of the best places to move to as a region, both for people and quality of life, as well as for business friendliness. Um, Tampa and Orlando have been looking at sustainability in their region um, for several years. They're ahead of Northeast Florida, and now they're realizing that there are synergies by having two regions next to each other with similar goals, and they're looking at themselves as a super region. Um, and then um, one of the regions that's gone in a direction very similar to the Northeast Florida, at least Northeast Florida goals, is Seattle. Um, Seattle did scenario planning just as we did with Reality Check, um, and they looked in particular at planning along transit corridors and at um, putting density near transit stations. And they've created a quality growth alliance, and these are regional partners who look at the quality of growth in all of the decisions that they make. So those are some ways that other regions have benefit. We hope to, to, uh, to use their, their models.